Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple silicone polymer that I use to make a super bouncy ball. Now, chemically speaking, silicone is a polymer made of repeating siloxane units. This is the general structure of a silicone polymer where R is basically any organic functional group. The overwhelming majority of silicone products sold use the chemical dimethyl siloxane as a base unit, where in the R group is two methyl groups. Silicones that use dimethyl siloxane as a base have some pros and cons, which I'll get into later in the video, but for now, let's make our own silicone. To get started, I simply measured out around 40 milliliters of sodium silicate and just over 10 milliliters of 95% ethanol. Sodium silicate is sold as water glass, and you can make it yourself by dissolving either elemental silicon or silicon dioxide in a very strong solution of sodium hydroxide. The sodium silicate is then transferred to a small beaker followed by the ethanol. These two are then vigorously mixed which will quickly result in a crumbly solid mass that's impossible to stir. This is scraped out of the beaker and to help form my crude polymer into a coherent shape I needed to then slowly work all the water and excess ethanol out of the mass. In case you were wondering why the mixture turned pink at first, it's because I thought it could be fun to add a bit of phenolphthalein into the ethanol. My idea here was that since sodium silicate is strongly alkaline, maybe phenolphthalein would leave me with a nice pink silicone. In retrospect, food coloring probably would have worked better though, as the pink color ended up quickly fading. Regardless, it does take a surprisingly long time to knead all the moisture out of the crude silicone, so while that's going on, I'll briefly explain what happened when the ethanol was mixed with the sodium silicate. If you take a look at the periodic table, you'll see that silicon is a group 14 nonmetal right under carbon. Like carbon, silicon tends to form four bonds, which allows both of these elements to function like the backbone of long branching polymer chains, with most plastics being carbon based. You can think of sodium silicate as the silicon equivalent of sodium carbonate, but due to silicon's expanded orbital, there are a few different possible silicates shown here. The sodium silicate sold as water glass and used in this reaction is primarily the orthosilicate, which forms a tetrahedral structure. When ethanol is added, the silicate particles begin to link up with each other to form long chains as the ethyl groups replace oxygen atoms in the silicate along with the displacement of water. Now because the specific oxygens that get replaced are random, some ethyl groups become cross-linked between chains, further increasing the size of the resulting molecule. The resulting large molecule is a solid and simple silicone polymer. Anyway, once I had spent about 5 minutes kneading and packing my silicone into a ball, I was left with a somewhat irregular and quite rigid silicone sphere. This little ball is remarkably bouncy and will return to nearly its initial height when it's dropped. It can also be thrown at the ground decently hard to make it bounce even higher, and I was able to get it to bounce so high that I ended up losing the thing and having to make another. Eventually, I tried throwing my second ball at the ground as hard as I could to see what would happen, and as I kind of expected, the ball ripped in half. On that note, the silicone made this way is extremely tough and so rigid that it becomes fragile under extreme conditions. This isn't ideal for most applications, and to make more flexible and forgiving silicones, most factories use an entirely different process than what I showed here. If you look back at the reaction from earlier, you'll remember that the polymerization of silicate to silicone was a dehydration reaction with ethanol. Rather than this process, most silicone is made by the hydrolysis of dimethyl dichlorosilane, which produces hydrogen chloride gas as a byproduct rather than water. Given the extreme toxicity of hydrogen chloride gas, this is a huge downside of this method. Another downside is that the resulting polydimethyl siloxane tends to release copious volumes of toxic formaldehyde above around 250 degrees Celsius, which can be a huge safety concern. Despite these concerns though, the main reason that polydimethyl siloxane remains the most widely used base in silicone polymers is because the resulting silicone is far more elastic and workable than the amorphous polyethyl siloxane I made in this video. Even still, it's my personal opinion that silicones are a much more environmentally friendly and sustainable polymer plastic than the majority of petroleum-based plastics. Additionally, the chlorine in dimethyl dichlorosilane can be replaced by acetate, which eliminates the chlorine gas generated by the polymerization process. This is the stuff used in silicone caulks, and the only real downside is the much longer curing time. 
Anyway, that's all I've got for today. I hope you found this video interesting, and as always, I want to thank all my incredible patrons for their generous contributions. Your support is vital and very appreciated. To everyone else, if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.